the mining subgenre kind of got overplayed a little bit too much to where there was a lot of games released in it that weren't really all that creative and they just ended up being clones of each other and it wasn't really in that interesting. However, this one kind of has a lot of potential and it shows that there's a lot of creative and interesting ideas that they could do with that kind of subgenre and mixing it together with other genres to really make an interesting game. And while this one doesn't quite reach the, its potential, it's still a really good game and one that you should definitely end up checking out if you like 2D platformer Metrovania games. Michael here with an impressions review of SteamWorld Dig 2. Full disclosure, I did get a review key for this one. I always forget to say that in reviews. Apologies, I'm not trying to do that to mislead people, but sometimes I just absolutely forget. But the reason why that's actually relevant in this one is because I actually have SteamWorld Dig 1, but I never actually got around to playing it. And I ended up looking for one of these styles of games to end up playing, and they sent me a review key at a really good time because I'm like, oh, hey, I was playing this other one, but I'll play this one instead. So I ended up checking out the second one before the first one. There's some problems in that because the story actually kind of carries on from the first game, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So this is a 2D Metrovania game primarily, and then it also has some mining aspects. We'll obviously show gameplay a little bit later. But let's go ahead and go in the options real quick. Gameplay options, disable flashing. One thing about this rumble thing is it doesn't seem to really affect my Xbox One controller unless I just completely turn it off, which is a little bit unfortunate. That seems to be a thing through all games. I don't know if that's like a driver problem on my computer. Probably is. And then you get video options. You have full screen and then windowed mode, and that's basically it. If you want to change your resolution in the game, you actually have to use the resolution scale option down at the bottom, which is a little bit annoying. But if you're having performance problems, you can end up doing that. They only have aim inclusion bloom and high quality light textures which is actually kind of nice to have a 2d game i normally don't expect too many graphics options so it's kind of nice to have those so if you are having troubles running the game you can actually adjust those settings to actually make it work you also have over scan adjustments and stuff along those lines which is kind of nice the annoying part about this is when you're in windowed mode you're able to actually resize it to whatever size you want which is super super nice however if you're at anything besides 16 by 9 it will zoom the camera in. That's why you have the ultra widescreen black borders, which adds black borders to make it so it's 16 by nine. And being able to see farther is actually really important in this game. We'll obviously cover that when we get into gameplay and you'll see why. And you get sound, music and sound. That's pretty much all you need there. Language, all the game is in text. So there's not really any voice acting or anything along those lines. So you pretty much use whatever you can read. And then you get controls which you can completely rebind both on the gamepad and the keyboard as well. And it just swaps over all the tooltips and everything just end up swapping over as soon as you end up clicking something and all the menus have full mouse control. However, the game doesn't actually use the mouse whatsoever unless you actually have it bound to like mouse clicks and stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate, but all the menus can be used with the mouse, which is super, super nice. I played it primarily with the gamepad. I found that that was the best kind of way to play it for me personally, but of course you can end up using whatever you want. Now let's go ahead and go ahead and load into save so we can end up showing off some gameplay. Now I have two saves here. One is my primary save here, which is eight hours in. Uh, that's not actually eight hours of gameplay. It's about six, maybe, maybe six, maybe right under six, because I did have the game sitting here and I did try to record videos and things along those lines and I was capturing footage. So uh, yeah, that's the thing. But um, I have an actual early game, which is actually just like right as soon as we unlock the kind of mine and everything. So I can end up showing off the really basic mechanics of the game, kind of talk about it. Now, I said this game had a lot of potential, and that's because it had a lot of mechanics and really interesting ideas. However, this game is incredibly short. If you're looking for like an infinite mining game, this is not it. This is actually a 2D Metrovania game with the sort of digger kind of mining aspects kind of thrown in. And so you actually have this guy here. He actually sells or you actually sell all your materials to him. And then you actually have an upgrade bench right here. This guy over here gives you new blueprints when you end up finding extra artifacts and stuff along those lines. We'll talk about those a little bit later. Let's go ahead and get into actual gameplay. Now, here you are in the mine, and this is literally just after you end up locking it. So I only have the kind of digger thing here. I just have a pickaxe. There we go. That's the word, digger thing. Um, the pickaxe here. And so you actually go through, and this is where the kind of mining aspect comes into play. And so you end up going through, and it's pretty basic. You end up just going through and digging, and there's different types of you know, stuff that ends up going around. And there's also enemies, for example. There's this little guy over here. I screwed up how to dig that. You actually have to be really careful. And one thing that I would actually play is praise about the game. Haha, he smashed himself with a rock is actually the kind of way that you have to strategize how you're actually going down. And this isn't something unique to this game specifically. Is that one going to get smashed by a rock as well? Man, these bugs are idiots. Um, but yeah, so you end up kind of digging out and you actually have to plan how you're going through because digging upwards isn't really possible. You can jump and you can run as well. Like you end up unlocking abilities, which we'll talk about a little bit later. 
but you actually can't really dig up. So I can dig up here, but then actually going up is really, really difficult. Now, later on in the game, you do unlock a little water cannon thing to where you can end up shooting upwards, kind of going up, but it's very, very limited. So it's actually really interesting when you're digging downwards. And this is kind of like one of the appeals of this genre is kind of planning out how you're going to go through your mind. Now, I'm just going willy nilly because obviously I'm kind of doing a review and this is kind of throwaway save. But this is basically the kind of mining aspects of the game. The interesting part about it is we'll actually get down and you'll actually see an arrow down at the bottom of the screen to where it's pointing to a cave. And this is where things get really interesting. I'm just going to dig straight down, which is a bad idea, but I did it anyways. Let's go ahead and do it. The interesting part is when you get into these caves, this is where the 2D kind of platforming section comes into play. And so in here, this is actually a platforming challenge. You actually see there's a little cog thing up there. And this is how you unlock the extra abilities and kind of progress through the stories. You end up finding these caves or these different little temples and things along those lines to where you end up just going through and you can collect these. So these cogs are actually used as an upgrade material. We'll end up showing off when we go back up to the surface. And so you'll end up going through here and it's like, oh, hey, secret area unlocked. And there's tons of secrets. And this is an artifact that we'll end up using to end up getting a new blueprint, which again, we'll end up showing off. And that's what's actually really, really interesting about this game is the fact that it has those 2D sections. Now, you can actually see down at the bottom, my inventory is pretty much full. I'm going to kill him before he even goes up. Haha, <laughs> not enough space. I can't pick it up because my inventory is full. You can see down at the bottom. And so, of course, you end up kind of going back up to the surface and you can end up selling the materials that you end up gathering and then you end up getting upgrades. Hello, chief. And so we'll just go up here. We'll end up going ahead and selling these materials. And there we go. So each different material will end up giving you a different value. And as you go down and progress through the tunnels and the mines, which the mines aren't really that deep, to be honest, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. But you'll end up getting new ones. Okay, I'm just going to skip that. Most of the story, by the way, is actually just talking to these guys. But um, we'll talk about the uh, artifacts and stuff like that. So this guy's going to give us a blueprint. So he'll be able to give us a new thing that we can end up using our cogs for. I'm just going to do that because I'm just going to go straight to the menu. Oh, God, this is taking way longer than I wanted it to. This is a terrible idea. Here's the workbench, though. This is where you actually get the upgrades. So the money is actually used to get these upgrades. You can also get additional cogs, but I can't show that off on the save. I'll show it off on my other save. But here we go. We can actually upgrade other things. So you can upgrade your pickaxe so that it's better and can actually go faster. Or you can get, like, a bigger backpack. Now, the interesting thing about this upgrade system, and this goes into kind of, like, the depth and the progression system, is none of this is really required. However, it does make the game go... A lot quicker, I will say. For example, getting extra backpack slots or being able to kind of mine through things faster is definitely important. Now, with that cog that we just found, we can actually unlock an ability. And so we'll actually look through here. And these the interesting thing about these abilities is I only have one thing that I can unlock. But you can actually uninstall and reinstall these at any point that you want at this workbench. So you just end up going back over to the surface. This will allow us to see enemy health bars, for example. But as you end up upgrading abilities, you actually get a bunch. Now, my other save will actually see that I have a bunch of different cogs. And so I can end up switching between different abilities, such as auto dodges or a portal. This is my favorite one, Portal of Pardon, which allows you, if you're in a safe spot, it allows you just go right back to the city which is called el machino and so that's you know kind of the upgrade system now the other upgrade system that you end up finding inside the game is these little kind of metrovania style sections to where you end up going through these different areas and then all of a sudden you'll find this sort of totem like thing and you stand in it and then it lifts them up and then kind of does a little steam thing because you are playing as a robot and so it kind of like reforges you and then you get a new ability so for example i got the running boots earlier on or when i go into my other save to show off some newer areas there's a grappling hook there's a water cannon and that's kind of how you progress through the game so the actual progression itself is not really tied to is that a secret that is a secret. I don't know if I found that on my other save. I should go grab that at some point. But the actual progression isn't actually tied to you mining through the game. The mining actually just makes the game easier. So the actual appeal is those platforming challenges and going through and get, finding these sort of extra caves that have these extra unlockables and the ones that actually have new abilities. Now that just got smashed by a rock because I didn't grab it. And so you can actually lose materials. So there's a little bit of depth. But the actual mechanics that you have, you actually have run, you can wall jump, and you actually get the grappling hook and the stuff like that that I'll show off a little bit later. But the actual depth to the gameplay is fairly shallow so you're actually going to be looking at this as kind of like a lot of filler content i would say and combat's pretty basic as well what you just saw there is basically how combat goes now i could have dodged him and done a little bit different now the interesting part about that is as you're progressing through the game is there's a lot of different areas and enemies can actually hurt each other as well so he just ended up killing his friend because he's a jerk and nobody likes him or something along those lines 
but each different area actually has different enemies and different hazards. For example, in this kind of area, you end up having a lot of different sort of areas that you can end up going through to where they have little cactuses that explode, or those enemies such as little caterpillar guys. Oh, he's going to say like, oh, hey, he's going to be like, hey, I wonder if we can end up getting through here. And it's like, oh, because we don't actually have the ability to get through there. And hey, we're going to end up getting this tunnel, which allows us to go back up to the surface. So this is actually how you travel between points. We'll show off a little bit more of that a little bit later. But now it's going to tell us to go back up, and it's going to tell us to go to a different area. And so that's kind of like the gist of the gameplay. And there's boss fights and things along those lines, but my main problem with this game, and I'm just going to talk about this while we're kind of looking at this, it's going to tell us to go to a different section. You can use press start to go to the world map. Yay! But it's going to tell us to go back down here and go to that other section and stuff like that. So I may as well go through here for a little bit. But my main problem with this game is the fact that it kind of lacks a lot of depth and it's not particularly long either. So my playthrough of the game originally was about five hours and I went back and got a bunch of different extra collectibles and that was with my AFK time. So I could easily see somebody going through. Here's the cactuses I was talking about. They explode and shoot down little spikes and then the rocks fall. Yay, I like them because they're cute. Um, but yeah, so basically... I could easily see somebody going through this game in four hours. And the problem with that is the fact that the game doesn't really have a lot of depth in its gameplay. It has enough to keep it interesting while you're playing through the game and, you know, kind of going through. But because these kind of upgrade mechanics are kind of arbitrary and you don't really need them to kind of actually progress through the game. Am I going the right way? I am going the right way. Sorry, it's been a while since I've done this because, you know, I've played through the game already. But because these upgrade mechanics aren't really required and, you know, you end up going through the Metrovania uh, kind of aspects to kind of progress through the game the most interesting part of the game ends up being the exploration which means that once you actually finish the game or kind of unlock most of the secrets you kind of run into a situation to where the game really doesn't have all that much to offer and so it's not a very long experience which i don't think is necessarily a bad thing if you're looking for a shorter experience that's definitely fine and i think the experience this game offers is definitely good However, it doesn't have a ton of depth. My favorite sections of the game is actually when you're inside those caves and you actually have those platforming sections, such as this one, for example. And it's, these are set every single time you go in them, they're going to be exactly the same. And so if you need to reset it, for example, there was some puzzle ones that I ended up screwing up. I actually had to reset it. Here's one of the Metrovania sections of the game. This is why I'm still in this save and not on the other one. But yeah, so it'll pound down and be like, and then you get a new ability. This one's going to give me my water cannon, which will show how you can actually dig upward and stuff along those lines and so yeah so this is actually how you progress through the game now talking about story real quick again another thing that kind of lacks a lot of depth is you know you've seen the gist of the kind of mining mechanics you do get another mining tool in the game as well you get a little automatic thing but it just makes it so you can dig through harder materials and you get this thing which allows you to kind of break through materials that are farther away and you can also use it for combat as well so you can end up shooting enemies with it but the problem is that the gameplay only evolves so far throughout the entire game, and about halfway through the game, you've pretty much seen everything that there is to see. That said, what there is to see is high quality content. I ran out of water. It is steam powered, so it's like, haha, you gotta use water for everything, which I think is kind of a clever idea. And it's actually really interesting. And that's what's actually really, really impressive about this game is a lot of the creative ideas. A lot of the kind of platforming puzzles and things, they use these very simple ideas and these very simple mechanics that don't really have all that much depth and kind of use them in really, really interesting ways. Oh, I can't actually grab that, so I'm just gonna throw away this. Yep, there we go. Don't really care. It's a throwaway kind of thing. Now, the annoying part, however, is I'm going to go ahead and exit out because I want to show off my other save. The annoying part is this is a set experience. This is... Oops. God damn it. <laughs> I just loaded into my um, save that I was in. Um, so the annoying part about this is none of this stuff respawns. It is a one playthrough sort of game. And so when I load up this other save here, I'll actually open up my map and you'll see that I've ended up digging through a lot of the map. And so I've ended up going through and there's no materials there. So for example, if I go ahead and sell all these materials, because I don't want to just lose them through something idiotic or something along those lines. Yay, materials, because materials don't respawn. There are other ways to get money. And so you're not like technically stricken. We can actually see here, I can actually show off the cogs as well. So this is my full save that I have. So you can actually get a bunch of abilities and you can actually change them at any point you want. So for example, if I didn't want to deal double damage to resource files but i wanted to auto dodge for some reason i can end up swapping over my cogs and I actually have an extra cog is there anything with one that i can end up setting up we'll do that one there we go so yeah so you can end up getting a bunch of different abilities and you can end up getting a bunch of different cogs but if i end up going down here for example just showing off the beginning area you'll actually see on my mini map up in the top right that everything is just kind of carved out some of the enemies respawn i'm gonna one shot them because i'm op as hell 
But yeah, so it's just, yeah, you're pretty much limited on that. So once you end up going through an area, you're done. And there's no kind of extra randomization or anything along those lines. I think the map is exactly the same every single time. But the actual appeal to that is the fact that you can end up going through it, kind of min-maxing your playthrough. You can actually speed through it, and that could be some kind of potential kind of benefit. I'm going to go to an area for later in the game that actually has some stuff that I can end up mining up, because why not? I've mostly cleaned out the game, because basically I've been going through and getting everything. There's still a few areas I haven't gone to. However, I was talking about that depth thing. Now, I've been going through a lot of the extra areas, and here's some new areas, or new enemies, and here's some uh, different mechanics as well. Like, I was talking about how when you go deeper, you get different mechanics. So in this area, there's poison, for example, that ends up kind of rotting things away, and there's these things that, you know, you end up bouncing off, and then they explode. There's exploding barrels, there's roly-poly enemies, and there's a bunch of different sort of stuff that they end up introducing. But the gameplay itself never really feels like it evolves all that much. And I've been going through getting a bunch of different... Oops, I set the bomb on him instead of doing what I wanted to do. And that was kind of funny. It worked anyways. But you can end up doing some different sort of stuff with the combat. But it just never feels like it was evolved. And I was going through getting all these different secrets and stuff. And it just... I got to a point to where I was just bored. To where I didn't really feel like I wanted to keep going. Once I ended up finishing the main story, which carries from, over from the first game, which I didn't really talk about the story, I don't think. it was. It's talking about, you start off the game looking for Rusty, which is the character from the first game, I believe. And so you're looking for him, and he's gone missing, and you're playing as Dorothy, this little girl robot here. And so you're going through, and you're like, oh, hey, oh, I haven't gotten that yet. Maybe I should just go ahead and try and get that. Woo! Um, so you're going through and you're trying to find him and basically the story once again like everything else doesn't really feel like it has a lot of depth and it's actually incredibly short there's only like four different sort of cutscene things that end up going through oh i have to dig upwards that's gonna be a nightmare how am i gonna do this um i bet i can figure it out um but yeah so you end up kind of going through the section to where it just doesn't really feel like the story really has any relevance which is kind of unfortunate especially when you kind of think about it and you're like Ah, oh, dang it. I, I don't think I can do this without a bunch of water. Um, I bet there's a way that I can... Oh, I can go up to there, maybe? Hmm. I'm trying to think, and I don't actually know a way. But this is actually what's interesting about the game, is trying to figure out puzzles and things. So I could actually dig upwards somewhere and try and figure out a way up there, or there's another way up there. It probably just wants me to grab a bunch of water. There are a bunch of sections in this game that are just trying to waste your time which is super annoying. There's probably, oh yeah, there's an ability that you can get that regenerates your water over time as well. Um, I'm sure there's like extra abilities and things along those lines that give you inf infinite water, but there's certain like secrets and stuff like that. Like near the beginning of the game, there's a bunch of different secrets that you can end up going back and getting that require later abilities, which ends up adding into the whole Metrovania section of the game. But once you end up kind of playing through the main story, the mechanics are done. Once you end up unlocking an ability, it kind of plays all of its cards very, very quickly. And while there are some interesting puzzle ideas, and there's a lot of little tiny advanced mechanics you can end up doing, it does just kind of feel like it's lacking a lot of depth. And maybe that's just because it doesn't really feel like it's a very long experience. Like I said, it's like, you know, a four hour experience for the main story. And while there's a bunch of little extra secrets to unlock, there's a bunch of artifacts to find, and you can get cogs to pretty much fill out your entire tree, doesn't really feel like it's necessary and you don't really get anything from it while you're playing through the story it does a great job of introducing new mechanics and making it so it's interesting throughout but after that four hours you're pretty much done and you're out of things to go through unless you really like that extra challenge from those platforming sections which i did for a while but this kind of goes into my complaints about the gameplay which are mostly nitpicky stuff so like stuff like the momentum is a little bit strange especially when you're in the air like if i tap i like fly forward which took a long freaking time to get used to like three hours out of my four hours of the main story was me just trying to get used to this jumping mechanic which is super annoying and there's certain sections that actually have like precision platforming especially when you get into the later sort of dungeon stuff and yeah it's it's a nightmare which for the most part, when it goes into those types of stuff, the major, like, oh my god, you need absolute precision stuff isn't required for the main story whatsoever. It's like for secrets and things along those lines. So if you're worried about this game becoming like one of the most difficult platformers you've ever played sort of situations, don't worry, you're not going to have to do too much of it. You can just skip most of the side content. But again, that just makes the game even shorter than it was. And so it's just... Yeah, that, I think that's my main problem with the game as well. Like, it's just way too short, and it doesn't feel like it uses too, like it uses too many mechanics, but doesn't really explore them as much as it possibly could. 
which is super unfortunate because everything else about this game I absolutely love. I love the art style. There's some inconsistencies such as the minimap doesn't fit the art style whatsoever, which is just kind of weird. And I think that's just an artistic choice that they came down to with technical limitations. They're like, okay, we have this technical sort of setup for the minimap. We'll just kind of make it this way so it's really easy to read and really easy to kind of calculate. And so they didn't really put in a lot of art effort into it, which is a little bit unfortunate. But everything else about the game is fantastic, and it's a fantastic four hours. It's just after that, you just realize how shallow the game is and all the upgrades and stuff like that. Like, you'll be going through kind of collecting all these items, and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna get as many materials as I possibly can because I want to progress through the game and yada yada. And then you realize, like, partway through the game, you're like, none of these materials actually matter. Like, I don't have to collect any of these materials. Oh, yeah, there's an ability that you can get to where you can actually shoot the... Uh, um, air thing or the water powered these bullets things you can shoot those while you're in the air I think I need that ability to actually get up here effectively or I could cheese it and try to get up there without it but uh, I don't think I can I don't think there's any spot to where I could use a grenade and try to cheese it a little bit but yeah these little cave sections these are the best parts of the game and these are where oh, well that's the wrong one that's actually for the story and stuff like that because it does actually want you to go through like the k the story thing oh yeah there's one section i didn't mention about the story as well to where i you know once again i didn't really find the story all that interesting and i actually ended up kind of breaking it a little bit i broke the sequence because for me the caves were the most interesting part of the game and so i ended up just kind of going through the caves and just exploring and i'm like oh yeah i'm gonna go and get all the secrets and stuff like that because that was that was what i was having fun with and kind of collecting all the extra upgrades and finding new platforming challenges eventually especially at this point in the game i'm just like all the platforming challenges use like one of three mechanics and it's just kind of boring and they don't like the gameplay mechanics themselves they do some really interesting things with the puzzles like i don't want it to sound like they did a bad job with the puzzle they did a great job with the platforming sections and the puzzles however the actual mechanics themselves do not have enough depth to make it stay interesting and so you run into a problem to where the game just doesn't feel like it has enough depth to actually make it interesting keep going and so when i'm going through looking at all these platforming challenges and these extra little secret areas i'm like why would i do this because i'm just using the same three mechanics and it just doesn't feel satisfying and while there is enough variety to kind of keep you going and i'm sure there's a lot of people that are going to disagree with that even when you end up going into that it just kind of shows that there's just not a lot of content in the game and when it comes down to exploration which was another part that i really enjoyed about the game there's only like four or five different areas inside the game as well which is why i've been mostly in the desert area and in that um one section because there's like there's the temple and then there's the lava section and then there's this area which is the overworld and that's it like there's not really much to explore either and so again it just kind of feels lackluster i've never been in this area so i'm just kind of like wandering around i can jump up there yeah so yeah that's my main problem with the game is it lacks a lot of depth that said though an amazing four hours it was it had me drawn in for the entire four hours while i didn't care about the story and i broke its sequence by just kind of exploring around i would that showed one of those generators earlier you're supposed to destroy those generators in the story for whatever reason i never learned why because why wasn't told to me because i accidentally went too far in that story and just ended up doing it and so there was an entire section to where i was like all right i did this and then i was like oh Okay, and it showed a cutscene to where I had no idea what was going on because it was talking about a thing that hadn't happened yet. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then I went and did what I was supposed to, and then it's like, go here. And it didn't explain why. And I'm like, okay. So I just like completely broke the story sequence. So there's something I'm missing in the story, although the story is super basic. So I kind of understand exactly what happened. And the ending of the story doesn't leave anything to the imagination, so... Yeah, story is not particularly great. So if you're looking for a story experience, this isn't particularly it. But gameplay mechanic wise, it's it's all right. It's, it's it's a good game. It's a good game. It's just not a fantastic game, which is a little bit disappointing. I want it to be fantastic. Oh, my God, that is Dr. Frog. Also, I messed this up, so I'm going to have to use a grenade. But yeah, that's my final thoughts on the game. It's just it doesn't have enough gameplay depth to make it interesting for a long period of time. That said, though, the mechanics that are here are used really really well so it's a really nice shorter experience and if that's what you're looking out for out of this game then that's absolutely fantastic and personally i'll enjoy it as that i've got plenty of other games to play so i'm not necessarily gonna bother with it and be like oh my god i i wanted this game to be this and that not really gonna bother me but for the most part 
an absolutely enjoyable experience. Has some gameplay hiccups here and there, like combat, for example, is a little bit kind of iffy when it gets to some of the boss fights and ends up just being a stat grind, especially when you get into the uh, final boss of the game. But aside from that, absolutely fantastic game. I loved my four hours with it. It's just that after those four hours, I'm done with the game. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this one. And of course, you can leave your thoughts and comments below. If you ended up trying the first SteamWorld Dig and haven't gotten SteamWorld Dig 2, oh my god, I found a dude! Hello, dude! You end up leaving your thoughts about the first game and everything. I know that people said that this game was supposedly a huge improvement on that. Oh, this is a challenge thing. Equip the death explosions. Oh my god, I want to read what that is. I'll be doing that. No, I didn't want to talk to you. I wanted to shoot my freaking thing upwards. God dang it. Um, yeah, some, sometimes you'll end up talking to NPCs or activating switches on accident and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm just traveling around now. But yeah, make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments. And of course, if you end up liking this game, go ahead and check it out. It is a shorter experience, although I enjoyed it. If you end up liking video games and stuff like that, you can end up checking out our gaming Discord, which is called the Broken Chat Box. Link in the description. We end up talking about video games and we play multiplayer stuff. This isn't a multiplayer game, so I can't really shill it, but I'm going to anyways. And of course, if you like my other styles of content, you can help me out by supporting on Patreon, and you can also check out my website to find out what else I'm doing, such as hacks, game mods, etc, etc. What happens if I fall? Oh, I go back to the beginning of the game. Cool. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, like I said, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Ooh, there's a secret here. I can tell because of the minimap. Also, all the minimap and stuff like that, you can end up turning it off if you don't want it. Oh, god damn it. This is going to be one of these sections. Just, I just, I just want to destroy it. Let me destroy it. Oh, do I have to, like, hit me? Because for some reason the hitbox is weird. Please, please destroy it before I run out of water. No, it's not going to let me destroy it.